Hey, how's it going? Steve here. So in this video, I've got a quick set of Photoshop techniques that you can uh, use to fix overexposed parts of your sky in your landscape images that have been caused by the sun just being too bright in the frame to be able to capture all the detail of the sky in one exposure. So if you like this video, hit like and just let me know so that I can keep on making more. And uh, yeah, remember to subscribe to my channel if you want to be updated by YouTube every time I publish a new video. So with that said, let's move over to Photoshop. Okay, so there's a few steps involved, but we should be able to run through them within a couple of minutes. So this should be quite a quick video. So the problem that we're working on is fixing this bright spot in the sky here where the sun has just overexposed all the, uh, all the color in the clouds and it's essentially just gone to pure white over there. So we've lost all detail. And you know, by the time we start processing this and adding contrast to the image, all of that white patch is just going to get left behind and it's going to stay white and it's just going to look pretty terrible. So what we're going to do first is copy and paste a part of the sky over that white patch so that we're going to embed a little bit of detail in there. Uh, so we want to take a piece of uh, you know, part of the sky that's quite, quite close to it so that it's going to be uh, you know, the same kind of color and texture. Uh, so I'm just using lasso tool there to create a selection. I'm going to press Command or Control and C on the keyboard to copy that, and then Command or Control and V to paste. And now we've got that little patch that's just appeared on layer one. Now, if I change to the Move tool uh, with V on the keyboard, you can see I can just move that around now. And I'm just going to place it on top of that white patch, just really roughly. It doesn't matter exactly where at the moment. And I'm going to change the blend mode to darken. And so what that's going to do is help blend that in really quite easily. Uh, you know, we're not going to have to worry about any masking here for this. Uh, so the next stage is to transform this. So I'm going to press Command or Control T on the keyboard and then just make this bigger so that it kind of fills that whole gap. And you can see there uh, because I've got darken selected in the blend mode drop down, it's uh, it's only allowing this patch to show where the uh, you know where it's darker than the background. So it's not covering up this uh, this foreground at all. So let me just uh, accept that transformation, and I'll just switch this back to normal blend mode for a second to show you what I mean. So this is where the patch is, and this is what it looks like on the darken blend mode. So we're getting there. We've got a bit of detail in there, but it's not obviously ideal. So we're just going to use the blur tool. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, just to blend that in a bit. And so, you know, we can just slide this pixel slider up and down until it sort of looks uh, like it's blended in basically. So do it by eye, depending on the shot, it's going to uh, be a different blur amount for you when you try this yourself. Uh, but let's click OK and accept that. So that's pretty good, but it kind of looks a bit weird just having colored that in. So we're going to do some extra work to blend it in and make it look a bit more like the sun is still shining from that bright spot, which it actually was in this scene. So the first thing, I'll just reduce the opacity of this slightly, of this layer. So it's not quite as dark as the, uh, as the clouds above. So it's still, you know, we still want to retain that brightness in that area, but we just don't want to make it so bright that all the detail disappears. So I've got around about 90%. So the next technique we're going to use to, uh, to help blend this all in is my sun blow technique. Now here are the steps. Again, it's quite simple. We're going to add a new layer to the image. So we've got layer two there now. I'm going to move, uh, change to the brush tool. I'm just going to increase the brush size using the right square bracket key. And I've got an opacity of about 30%. Now I'm just going to sample one of these colors from around this brightest part of the sky. So when you've got the brush tool selected, you can hold Alt or Option on the keyboard. And the brush tool changes to the eyedrop tool. I'm going to click on the as close to the lightest part of that sky there that I can find. So that's this kind of light yellowy color. And 
I'm just going to dab with the brush once here. Then I'm going to increase the brush size. I'm going to do another one, and I'll increase the brush increase the brush size once more, and do another dab of uh, of color. So this is way too strong at the moment, but what we can do is reduce the opacity of the uh, layer just to blend that effect in. And so that's kind of creating that hazy light to, uh, to mimic the bright sun shining over the edge of those, uh, you know, of, of the land over there in the distance. So you can probably reduce that to somewhere between 20 and 30%. Let's stick with 30. And so that's pretty good. Now let's just do that once more, but instead of using the light yellow color, I'm just going to use a white foreground color and I'm just going to do one more dab and then one more here. And I'm going to have a look at what this looks like on overlay or soft light. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity again. So that's just adding another kind of element of that dynamic light coming from over the over the edge of the uh, hills over there in the distance. So let's have a look at the before and after on this. So here's the before, and here's the after. So just looking at this, maybe we could lighten the uh, the initial layer up again a bit. So rather than reduce the opacity, I think. I'm going to just add a curves adjustment and I will um, clip it to that patch of uh, color. So I can do that by holding Alt or Option on the keyboard and clicking on that line in between the two layers there. And that means that anything we do with this curves adjustment now is only going to affect that patch of light, uh, that patch of color on the layer immediately beneath it. So we can brighten that up a little bit. So let's keep it around about here. That looks Okay, again, just really subtle. May not even be coming across in the video, depending on how this appears on your screen. So let's zoom out, have a look what that looks like. I think that looks pretty good. Um, now, with this white layer, I'm undecided whether I prefer it on the normal blend mode or on soft light, but you can experiment with this uh, you know, sometimes it works better in one mode, others it works better in another mode. Uh, normal, uh, let's look at soft light and hard light, or soft light and overlay, those are the ones you want to be toggling between. Yeah, I think they're all pretty similar, so let's stick with soft light, the original uh, choice. And again, let's have a look at the before and after on this. Okay, that's pretty good. So this is before with that big white patch, and this is after with that sky filled in and with that light still emanating from that part of the sky over there. Uh, so from this point on, we can make some adjustments to, you know, to process this image to completion. And now we've got some detail in there that's going to actually respond to any adjustments that we make. So for example, let's have a look at what a quick autumn effect layer would, uh, would look like. So there are techniques out there that you can use um, on YouTube. I've got a video on my YouTube channel. For the autumn effect but I've also got a button here in my luminosity masking panel that just does it for me so I'm going to hit that and that's going to generate my autumn effect layer and it comes with a black layer mask so now I can just press one of these buttons here to add a luminosity mask to apply it to just say for example the highlights let's try that h1 so there's before and there's after and we can just toggle between some of the various highlight and shadow masks just to apply that autumn effect to various tonal ranges. And then we can just reduce the opacity. I think I like it in the midtones there. So let's reduce the opacity. That's pretty good. Uh, let's add a basic contrast adjustment. So let's go to levels and let's just tweak some of these values here just to add a bit of contrast and then because that has again overexposed the sky up there I think we'll remove this from the uh, from the highlights so let's just 
use one of these luminosity channels again. So let's keep this only in the uh, shadows. So there we go, S1 gives us a shadow selection or a shadow mask. And there we go. Uh, so I think that probably wraps this, uh, this tutorial up. So let's just have one more quick before and after look at this image. So here's before, straight out of Lightroom with that big ugly white patch over there. And then here, a lot softer, a lot more blended in. Um, and with that sky all repaired and looking nice and dandy. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick tutorial. Uh, let me know in the comments if you did and if you're going to try this out on some images that you've already got uh, in your library that you're ready to, uh, to try these techniques out on. Uh, so in the meantime, yeah, remember to subscribe to my channel if you're not already and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time.